Are you fearful of public speaking? Maybe it's something that really phases you. It really knocks your confidence and you're, you're scared to get out there. Yet it's something you want to be able to overcome. Well, today I'm going to share some guidance around public speaking and building your confidence around it. And if you stay until the very end, I have an extra point for you then as well. Now, just before I dive in, I wanted to mention this. If you want to make sure that you're up to date with all the episodes so you can really boost your self-esteem and confidence and get an extra tip each week, just click the link in the show notes below to make sure you're up to speed. So for me, with my public speaking confidence, it was some people were like, wow, you're you're very confident when you get out there on stage, you do lots of podcasts, uh, you know, I've done digital and in-person stages. I do Toastmasters, which is a public speaking forum. And it's it didn't come easy. Um, there was a point where I was even scared to say my name in a meeting. And I remember when I went to my first Toastmasters meeting, it was terrifying, right? It was so, so scary. Um, Toastmasters is a public, if you're not familiar, it's an international organization, which is great. And so they're all over the world. You basically can go into one of these, and they're usually twice a month in the UK, at least anyway. And you can go in, you can practice speaking in front of people. And you can just start with even speaking for 30 seconds to a minute, and then you can build up from there. And there are a bunch of people who are going to help you, going to support you. They're not going to judge you in a negative way. They're there to just give you that little bit of guidance to really build it up. I remember going to my first one. I was like, just introducing myself for five seconds. Everyone looking at me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to die. Those are the kind of thoughts. Maybe maybe you can relate to it as well. And like I say, I was also very nervous in work. I remember starting my first YouTube video. It was like, oh, my God, I wake up my first YouTube video. Maybe I need to do a bit more research before I put myself out there. Um or even my podcast, I was like, oh my God, I've got to put my first podcast episode out there. What happens if I get some negative feedback? Oh my God. So I've definitely been in that boat. So what I really want to share with you is how can you build that confidence in your public speaking ability? Now, public speaking, why is it so fearful? So many people actually have this fear. And like I say, I've definitely been in the boat when I've been really scared of public speaking. And from kind of the themes or there's a there's a few things but there's there's like one overarching theme that i've really been able to nail it down to and, and understand from my reading my research there's the fear of embarrassment right like oh, what if you say something or look stupid or say something out of turn right there's a lack of control maybe you can't control what the audience are going to do which is totally true right you well we can't control life as well and the biggest one, though, which kind of overarches all of these is that fear of rejection. And generally, human beings do not like the fear of rejection. It is terrifying. And why is that? Because it links to the fear of not being enough and the deeper fear of not being loved. And when I realized that, I was like, wow. Wow. Amazing. And that's also uh, what I've discovered in dating and sort of in the relationship area as well why that can also bring up quite strong feelings of the fear of rejection therefore not enough therefore not lovable as well yet we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today i've got i've spoken about that in other episodes but public speaking is definitely a scary scary thing right now ask yourself this if you're really wanting to get out there do a bit more speaking or maybe you, you're holding back from work or maybe you do it at work and you're terrified or maybe in your business or another another thing, maybe it's a social, maybe it's a wedding you've got to do a bit of speaking at. Well, how is it helping you by being in the same patterns again and again? Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I'm useless. It's probably not very fun, I'm guessing, because it certainly wasn't for me when I was like, I'm useless to this. Oh, my God, I'm going to mess up, right? And there's definitely improvement for me to get better even now, right? The thing is, I know that if I put myself out there and I feel it now in my body that I'm confident to go out and there and do it, even if I, it is a little bit nerve wracking at first. Ask yourself, how is it going to help you staying the same though? So that's why I want to give you a few steps now and let's dive into them. So the first one, prepare, practice and praise. And what I mean by this is it sounds so simple, yet. 
I don't believe I, I I don't believe people do it in the the way that I most effective in my opinion. It's like oh I got I got this speech. They may practice a little bit. Yeah, we don't praise ourselves for practicing. When we praise ourselves, it tells our nervous system that we're good and we can do more of it. Right? Praise, praise, praise. Practice, practice, practice. And when you're practicing, make sure you're saying it out loud. Saying something in your head is completely different to actually saying it out loud. The second one, know your audience, know who you're talking to. When you can understand who you're talking to, you're going to have a lot more confident knowing what kind of content you need to present. The third one, start smaller. Don't go out there. Start with something like Toastmasters. You don't have to go out there and then present to the whole company, right? Now, obviously, there may be a, a situation where you're just forced into presenting in front of the majority of the company, okay? Um, but where possible, try and start small. Eat, like what I used to do is just present to like a group of five or six people, and then it grew and grew and grew. Maybe even a couple of people to begin with and get people to watch you, practice with them. Going back to the practice point, practice with like a few people that are going to help you, right? Start smaller. Now, are you going to feel embarrassed? Of course you are to begin with. Yet the more you do it, the more you can tell yourself that it's safe. And therefore, you're not going to get that fear of being in love the more you do it. Because often our brain makes up these fears, but when we actually go through these things, it builds confidence, it builds momentum and therefore confidence. The fourth point I want to share is visualize your success. Visualization is a big part of my life. I visualize for 40 minutes a day, usually just before I'm going to go to sleep. Now, some people like to do it in the morning. I like to do it before I go to bed. When I visualize, like I visualize multiple things, you know, in, in business, in, um, you know, the ideal deal woman, the ideal location, all these kind of things that I'd be living and the kind of like health. I visualize these things. The public speak when when I start visualizing these things, though, things start coming into my life and I start feeling a lot more confident about situation because your brain doesn't know the difference between fake and reality. So therefore, visualization is something that can really boost your confidence as well. So start visualizing yourself as well as practicing out loud and visualizing. It's the brilliant combination of of those two, because if you're just mentally imagining it, that's effective. But also. If you're actually practicing, you've got those two things doing and then obviously take opportunities to do it. But when you really see yourself, don't see yourself in the third person, see yourself in first person like you're actually in your body doing a great presentation and do it like every single day. Even just start off with five, 10 minutes visualizing yourself, maybe some music that relaxes you. Just try it for a week and then start visualizing yourself during the successful public speaking session and how great you feel. Don't just look at it like intellectually, actually feel into the body, feel like the excitement. Try and take that excitement from somewhere else in your life when you're really excited, you're really proud of yourself and then start feeling that when you're visualizing. Give it a go, right? Don't just take my word for it. Actually put some of this into practice. As with anything I say, right? You've got to go out and test it. You can't just listen to me and go, oh, that was great. It's actually about taking action. And then the fifth point, don't be a perfectionist because they don't exist. There's no such thing as perfectionism. It's just something people wake up. People are like, I've got to be perfect before I speak. I've got to be perfect before I start a business. I've got to be perfect before I go to the gym. All these kind of rubbish, right? There's no such thing. Perfectionism is just fear of not being enough, right? There's high standards. That's a completely different thing. Perfectionism doesn't exist. So no, you're going to mess up. No, there's going to be mistakes. The same with anything. Maybe there's a situation you can probably think of in your life where you were not great to begin with, but you got better and better. If you're fortunate enough to walk in this life, learning to walk, you, you know, perfect. Learning to drive, you weren't perfect. Maybe starting a career or a job, you were not perfect when you started. You probably made a lot of mistakes. Or it took you a while to get to grips with things, right? Yeah, yes, there are people who get to grips with things quicker than others and have a bit more natural talent. Yet when we begin, we're nowhere near as good as we are like a few weeks or a few months down the line, right? So just go out and take action. And like I say, go back to the practice, practice for yourself, practice with small groups, maybe like once every week or every couple of weeks. Okay. 
And I had those are my five points. And I also have an extra point for you that I'm going to mention in a minute. Now, just again uh, to mention, if you never want to miss an episode, make sure you join the newsletter list link below where I'll be giving you a weekly insight into self-confidence, self-esteem and mindset. And you'll be kept up to date with the episodes in that. So check out the show notes below and click that link. OK, my bonus point for you today is identity statement. This is something that's really helped me in my life. An identity statement, often we have bad identities around it, or what's a good identity and what's a bad identity? I'd say a good identity is something that supports you and has that good psychology that allow you to move towards what you want. Bad psychology are the things that hold you back. Now, the problem is most of us are saying bad things for ourselves, like I am an idiot, I am useless, I am not enough, I'm a terrible public speaker or I'm never going to be worthy to uh, find someone or attract someone, or I'm not worthy of the money. And actually quite a lot of these are unconscious. Now start creating a powerful identity statement. So for example, say I am a powerful, amazing public speaker. And the thing is not to just stay, you've got to feel the emotion. And I like to say my identity statement after I do exercise, because I've got those feel good endorphins pumping through my body particularly when I've done a hard weight session or a hard interval session, because then the endorphins in my body are going. And then I start saying these identity statements to myself. um, And that really, really starts ingraining it in in my system. And therefore I catch myself in a good way and constantly start doing things towards where I want to go because I've got an identity. As Tony Robbins says, human beings have a need to be consistent with our identity. So, if you've got like an identity constantly saying I'm useless at public speaking, I am the word is a very powerful s- statement. It creates an identity for you. Well, if you keep saying that, of course you are, of course you're going to like hold yourself back because you're telling yourself that now start telling yourself the amazing things about you. And it's going to be hard to sink in at first. That's why it's really important to have movement, feeling, emotion. You've got to feel it in your body. You've got to like imagine you've got a great vibration through you. And I would suggest listening to some music, maybe moving about before this, getting yourself into a good state before you start saying an identity statement. And say that 10 times yourself twice a day would be a great starting point as well. So take one of the, <coughs> excuse me, take at least one of those points away. Start putting it into action, you know, do it for at least a week and then start writing your results, what you're doing, how you're feeling about public speaking. So that's what I got for you today. I appreciate you for being here. You're improving other people's lives, but being the best you. And remember, you are in control of your own self-esteem and confidence.